So if you've watched either of my Wash and Cure Station reviews previously, you'll notice that I'm pretty much bemused by this type of product. There's nothing to really wow me. Well, trust Uniformation, who absolutely blew me away with their GK2 printer, and I'm standing by it now. I predict that it will remain better than even the new upcoming 12K printers that, well, I'll talk about more in future videos, but trust them to come out with something quite innovative when it comes to wash and cure stations. And the good thing is, this can be a simple video, because these things are quite simple products. Uniformation have gone a different way when it comes to washing stations. Normally you get a big vat with a magnetized impeller that basically spins and spins and spins and then it rinses the model and it takes all of the wet resin off. Well, most of the wet resin. Uniformation have gone a different route by giving us an ultrasonic cleaner. And that really should be enough said, and I just end the review here. Ultrasonic cleaners are more than well known for the fact that they can deeply penetrate and get grime and dirt out of small components. They've been a go-to for years because the jewellery industry rely on them in order to get all the different oils out of different pieces of jewellery, anything from chains to rings and earrings. Surely you've seen a TikTok or a YouTube short or an Instagram story or whatever they're called, reels, and it's been a piece of jewellery put inside a lovely clean vat with an ultrasonic cleaner and you can see the dirt just pouring off. Well, this is no different. I mean, it's different that it's Uniformation branded and it looks pretty and it's made specifically for the Uniformation GK2 because you can actually lift the vat out of that and slide it neatly into this ultrasonic cleaner. Now, typically I won't put the entire vat into a cleaner because, well, whilst it's in the cleaner, it's not printing and I want to utilize it printing. So it includes a cage so I can just take my models off the vat and then put them straight into the bottom of this. Now, unlike the other ones, which again are impellers, because this is an ultrasonic cleaner, what it does is cause micro vibrations and it penetrates deep to the surface of the model. Don't leave things in here too long because yes, those vibrations will actually eat into the resin after very long periods of time, like 30, 40 minutes or more. But for a quick 10 minute cycle, all you need to do is rinse your models off First, I normally use a pickle jar, get the majority off because that keeps your liquid inside the cleaner lasting a lot longer. And after a rinse, just pop it into this ultrasonic cleaner and this will get every last ounce of resin out of the deep recesses of your models. Like it's a marginal difference between this and what you get with an impeller based cleaner. But again, when we're talking about the level of detail people want from their prints, yeah, it makes a difference and it's certainly worth it in my opinion. Now I have heard people online say that you shouldn't use isopropanol or methylated spirits in an ultrasonic cleaner because it can cause it to combust. I, I don't know how, I don't think it'll happen, I don't believe it'll happen. These products are sold to do this and Uniformation are fully aware that people are cleaning resins with these sorts of liquids. But again, I'm no scientist, I'm no chemist. What I do know through a quick Google is that Yes, when you get isopropanol to 399 degrees Celsius, it will spontaneously combust. But I don't think for any reason this cleaner is going to get anywhere near that. I don't know if the vibration plays a part in it, but I am yet to hear a story of somebody using an ultrasonic cleaner with IPA and have a sudden and instantaneous combustion. If you have any evidence of this, please pop it down in the comments so I can talk about it in a future video. So there you go, it cleans better than anything else. If you want my justification for that, it's that all of the other washing cure stations I've had are now off my bench, and this is the one that I use solely. I don't use anything else for washing, I use this. As for controlling it, this is really straightforward, and I like the fact that you can't actually see where the controls are until you plug it in, because they all light up on this black front screen. But yeah, there's only a few buttons. You literally press up and down to set the time and then press a button to go and it goes until the timer counts down to zero. Nice and simple. And it's also got handles on the side, which is really useful for moving it considering it's quite heavy on its own and it's going to have seven litres of cleaning fluid in it. This is something that other manufacturers haven't thought of. They just give you a big pot to carry. And yeah, it's not difficult, but it just makes you feel that little bit safer. As for emptying this though, you can't just simply tip it upside down. You'd get liquid in every single part of the unit. But thankfully they give you a hose with a vent on the back. So all you need to do is twist it round and then feed it out to a waste container. 
This pipe is a little bit tough, it's not the most flexible, and because of that, the cleaner does need to sit a little proud of the wall just so you can get the bend in. But when it's not in use, you can just clip it in because they've actually included a clip on the back of the cleaning unit. Now, when it comes to the cure station, this is good, but it's not my favorite cure station. It's got some additional features that make it better than others, but in some ways it's a little bit of a disappointment and it hurts me to say this on, against a company that I've loved so much. So it looks good, there's a start. It's got a big window in the front. It looks fantastic, like a futuristic microwave, but not in a good way that I'll come onto in a moment. The features I do like include the fact that it's got diffused LEDs all the way around it. So not only have you got them in the bottom and the sides like with other curing stations, but you also have one on the lid as well. And the 10.2 inch turntable is a welcome addition. Yeah, I've said this numerous times. Height is important, but most people don't get models off the plate and have them stood upright. The most important thing is area because you'll have lots of little things on here. But at the same time, I did feel slightly limited by the fact that this 10.2 inch turntable can only work with models that are six inches high, otherwise they'll start hitting things on the lid, such as the LEDs. And the design choice that has got me a little bit head scratching is the fact that in the middle of this turntable when you connect it, unlike the other brands that have gone from some kind of spout that you just sit the turntable on, this one you put a bolt through. So if you've got a model with a large flat base, then this is going to get in the way of things that you're trying to cure. And I do think there's a missed opportunity in the design of both of these products. Again, I compared this earlier to a microwave and it has that look, but honestly, because I had that feel about it when I saw it on the website, I was disappointed to get the two products home and realize that it didn't open at the front like a microwave does because I think it would be a good option to do that and then you could sit one item on top of the other and take up less desk space. Maybe that's just me, I don't know if that would cause problems with the product's operation, but yeah, less surface area on my desk taken up sounds like a good idea. No one else has done it, and I can't blame Uniformation for not doing it, but again, this is the only curing station that made me think, actually, yeah, that could be an idea. It looks like that should be how it works. And the final bit of critique is on both products. It's the lids. Not, not the lids, and apparently the lids are actually an improvement over an early generation of this product, but it's the hinges. They're not bad, and I'm sure they're absolutely fine, but when you look at how innovative Uniformation have been with both the printer, the GK2, and the wash station, even the cure station, if you look at this, they all scream quality. Everything from the buttons, to the build, to the style, to the design, and these hinges just seem a little bit flimsy. Again, I'm sure they're fine, but they just don't look or feel the part. They feel cheap. So in summary, yeah, it, it's a good set. Like honestly, if you're gonna go for something like this, then I would say definitely on the wash station. Yeah, get an ultrasonic cleaner. They're a lot better than just the impeller cleaners that we get from other brands. When it comes to the cure station, it's okay. I mean, it's more expensive than other brands, but I wouldn't jump to it for any reason. It, it's okay. It's no worse, but I don't think I'd pay this amount of money when you can get something that does the same job a little bit cheaper. But if you are getting it in a bundle with the GK2, then yeah, it's absolutely fine. I wouldn't worry about it at all. It does look good. It does the job. And when you have all three units on your desk together, it looks pretty darn smart. But just know that you're paying probably a bit more for looks than design. Does it cure any faster than anything else? Well, it's got more lights in it and things are more surrounded by light than with any other cure station. So by that measure alone, I'd say, yeah. But I'm still yet to see a correct source on the truth on how long things should be cured for anyway. So if you've got any idea what the correct way to cure things is, then let me know down in the comments because that's the next thing I need to go to learn so I can teach more people what the proper thing to do is. So I want to say thank you for watching. If you appreciated this video in any way, then please let me know by just hitting that like button. Or if you want to know any more information or just leave a comment for the algorithm, pop down below the word comment for the algorithm or comment. Thanks very much for watching and thanks to our patrons who without them, we would not be making these videos. If you want to get your name up in lights, consider joining us. And if you want to ask any questions on how to get your printer working or a buying advice or anything like that based on your budget, your time, your area constraints, then come and join me on Patreon and I'll be happy to answer any of your questions directly so you can choose the right thing for you. 
Stay tuned for future videos because I'm about to go through a month long, if not longer, reviewing 12K printers and various others that are coming from a multitude of different brands. It's going to be a busy few months and then we've got Christmas. So thanks. Stick around to get more printer reviews and tips and tricks and other things. Until next time, see you guys. Fohammer out.